They'll be calling you a radical. We have massive, massive breaking news out of Fukushima, which I think is the most devastating, biggest news since the day it happened. As reported by the examiner, which I give incredible credibility to, Fukushima themselves, TEPCO themselves, in their releases today, admit, admit a massive dump of plutonium into the Pacific. And you're going to sit there and say, oh, so what? Oh, really? So what? Let me tell you something. I have three very serious whistleblowers who have been to me. I have plenty of these activists that have been on this from day one. I'm like, Kevin, you have these studies. Release them, release them, release them. I said, I don't have actual copies of the study. I have two whistleblowers from two major universities in the United States who have sent me their preliminary data months ago. And I said, this, what their preliminary data shows is such catastrophic news, I cannot report it. I do not want to be a yellow journalist. But on the other hand, I cannot be, as I've turned, black and yellow journalist. Black and yellow, the refusal to report. This report today says this. Not the leaching into the Pacific. No, no, no. An intentional massive plutonium dump. A massive plutonium dump as they were lying. They're admitting now that they lied about the contamination into Japan. They're admitting that now. The UN themselves is begging them. If there's a petition circulated by the UN to evacuate 300,000 children alone. We know factually, the data is out there factually, that 80% of the entire contamination of Fukushima, 20% was on the mainland in the area, 80% was pushed into the Pacific Ocean. We know this factually. Okay, do the math on what they've reported today. Why is this so big? I'll tell you why it's so big. Because this isn't season 137 or 130, which is catastrophic, which we know has been detected, I think. The two studies that I have, the whistleblowers coming to me. As I've ran this by several activists, Jan, Miss Milky the Clown, who I give incredible credibility to. As her and I have been on this from day one, as I gave these first reports for a reason. That first report, day one that morning, the first report I started going crazy about, they're dumping plutonium in the Pacific. They're dumping plutonium in the Pacific. Went crazy. This was before I got leukemia. This is our worst fears conform. As the propaganda machine has been in full flight of the UN and the IEA, they're criminal scum. This is our worst fears. TEPCO admits today, admits, they did a massive plutonium dump. That's what you're up against. It's where the wind blows, it's where the water flows, and this is our worst fears confirmed. Everybody says, oh, this is nothing new. Oh, really? Oh, really? Nothing new. We know it's been leaching into the Pacific, and we know that we've dealt with the media cover-up, and now we're dealing with the science academia world cover-up 2.0. Their studies say, both these studies, and they're independent, and I have, they're mutually exclusive, as far as the people, of course we know they're the same study. You know, both say they're detecting small traces of plutonium in the preliminary results and 90. Why is this so massively important? It is our worst fears. If we start to detect any, any sign of plutonium, which we know after this report factually, it's on. The half-life in moxie fuel is this, we know this is moxie. We know factually that the half-life is hundreds of thousands of years. It kills you. It coats the liner of your bone. This is our worst fears confirmed. Leaders of the main political parties debated the future of nuclear power in the country's energy mix. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda presented the position of the ruling Democratic Party. He pledged to aim for a shutdown of all nuclear plants by the end of the 2030s. I believe that after last year's nuclear accident, the public is determined to get rid of nuclear power and to shut down the plants. We need to promote realistic policies that respond to these expectations. One of Noda's main opponents, Liberal Democratic Party leader Shinzo Abe, said nuclear power should not be a matter of black or white. After experiencing such a severe nuclear accident, we've all decided that Japan should depend on nuclear power as little as possible. 
But the LDP's position is not to simply say, let's go nuclear-free. That's because we're a responsible party. Abe said the real issue is how to secure enough electricity. He added it would be unreasonable to rely on renewable energy sources as they have yet to be fully developed. The leader of the newly formed Tomorrow Party, Yukiko Kada, called for an end to nuclear power generation within a decade. She added her party would push for electricity conservation measures and the development of alternative sources of energy. Japan Restoration Party leader and former Tokyo governor Shintaro Ishihara said people who talk about reducing nuclear power should think first about the country's energy mix. He called for simulations to determine whether Japan can afford to shut down its nuclear plants. Official campaigning for the election kicks off on Tuesday. Voters will head to the polls on December 16th. Experts in Japan are preparing to dig for more answers in regards to safety at some of the country's nuclear power plants. They're trying to assess the threat of fault lines running below the facilities. The Japanese government toughened safety standards following last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. All of Japan's operating commercial reactors went offline in the months after the March 2011 disaster. Then last July, the Prime Minister approved the restart of the two units at the Oi plant in Fukui Prefecture. Regulators assured they would be able to withstand a major earthquake or tsunami. But the possible presence of an active fault directly beneath the plant has raised doubts about the reactors. We're taking a closer look at this threat from below in our latest installment of Nuclear Watch. What is defined, first of all, an active fault and how does it constitute a threat to the Oi nuclear plant? The term active fault refers to faults that have already moved several times in the past and that are likely to move again. This could trigger an earthquake and cause damage in surrounding areas. The OE nuclear plant sits on a fault called F6. The fracture runs across critical pipes that are meant to cool the reactors. The plant's operator, Kansai Electric Power Company, has continuously maintained that F6 is not an active fault, an assessment initially backed by the government. But inspections after the March 11th accident have led some experts to conclude that the fault may be active after all. That is why Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority, the NRA, sent a team to inspect the plant. Didn't the utility or the government know about the presence of a fault at the time of the plant's construction? They did. How backwards are you? Honestly, how backwards? How misguided? The fault was examined in 1985, before the construction of Units 3 and 4. There are several factors that explain why the issue wasn't debated at the time. Geologists didn't have the same level of understanding about seismic faults, and the standards to define whether a fault is active or not were different. Another important factor is that before the Fukushima accident, the government depended too much on the plant operator's own assessment. How postured, how grown, as ignorance is a disease, it is an evil disease that has passed over. Now, how widespread is this problem? There are 17 commercial nuclear plants in Japan and one major research reactor. The NRA has ordered geological surveys at six sites, including OI. Experts will conduct another inspection at the Tsuruga plant on Saturday. The agency is drafting new standards of earthquake resistance based on the lessons from March 11th. So it's very likely that surveys will be extended to all existing plants. What can we expect in the months ahead? Right now, the operator of the OE plant is conducting an additional survey ordered by the NRA. Inspectors could make another visit as early as next month. Government regulations prohibit the construction of critical nuclear infrastructure directly above active faults. This means that if the fault beneath OE is deemed to be active, the plant cannot stay online. The chairman of the NRA said he is ready to shut down the reactors if there is any indication that the fault 
is active. Kansai Electric says the survey will be a long process, meaning this debate could go on for quite some time. The question now is whether the NRA decides to set a clear deadline to prevent the operator from dragging its feet. It's a meeting of heavyweights. Two Japanese electrical machinery makers have announced they're forming a power generation joint venture. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, or MHI, and Hitachi have laid out plans for a thermal power partnership. They're also keen to collaborate in the nuclear plant business for emerging markets. The thermal power venture announced Thursday will launch in January 2014. MHI will own 65% of the new company and Hitachi will own the rest. Company officials say they're also looking at nuclear power projects. The outlook for restarting Japanese nuclear power plants doesn't look good. But if prospects become clearer in the near future, we'll consider how our companies can collaborate. We will explore the best ways to collaborate in the nuclear power industry. Observers say the two companies' challenge will be how well they can compete with Western rivals in the field of power generation. As I've termed this young generation, the post-ignorant generation, the post-ignorance generation, post-ignorance, look what we're going to hand them. Because these dogmatic baby boomers and active boomers are so stupid, so postured, groomed, so ignorant, they can't, you can't even have a conversation with these morons. They'll, they'll have their child with autism, they'll have asthma, they'll die of cancer and take it to their grave with their dogmatic posture. And these are our worst fears confirmed. This report, and isn't it ironic, none of the media reported this. None of the media, there are no investigative reporters. It's a bunch of freelancers. It's, it's ironic, Jan, Miss Smokey the Clown, you know, Christine, all these different people. I'm not a scientist. I'm surely not a reporter. I guess I am now. The science world won't do anything for us. These academia fucks, they sit on their fucking asses in their fucking glass fucking houses and suck up their fucking money and do nothing. The media. Fuck, they read off the same fucking telepop and they fucking do nothing. I take it back, they black and yellow journalism, which I can tell you right now, the future genera generations will mitigate. You're gonna get the fuck see that you so fucking hard. CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, Reuters, every one of you, and you fucking universities are holding that, you're gonna get the fuck see that. Fuck you, creepy motherfuckers. I'm fighting for my fucking life. You fuckers are accessory to fucking mass fucking murder. This is our worst fucking firm fears confirmed. Our worst fears confirmed. This is new. This is breaking. They admit a massive plutonium fucking dump. 